Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to go over modeling the mushroom. Okay. And like I mentioned before, or maybe you don't remember, but I chose the mushroom because it's fairly organic, uh, meaning that uh, organic modeling versus mechanical modeling of straight lines and edges. So it's a good introduction to uh, organic modeling for polygons. And uh, it's also lends a good shape for learning the basics of rigging. And um, yeah, so I guess I'll start now. Also, um, it might take a bit of a while, you know, with modeling, it takes some experimentation and, you know, trial work, you know, just uh, experimenting the shapes, pushing and pulling faces, edges. So it's not a, a perfect straight, you know, goal. Okay. Uh, I modeled this, uh, month ago maybe month and a half so i i probably forgot some of the exact steps i took that's why it's going to take some you know trial and error and uh this is the image reference that you will be using basically i took a screenshot of this uh, at a high resolution and uh i took away the background so you have it as a transparency uh, for example see transparent by the way if you want to change the background color it's a uh, alt or option on the Mac option on the Mac and you also press B as in Bob okay all right First, I'm gonna get rid of this and this, my mushroom. I'm gonna put it in this layer, make sure I have it selected. Click that, double click that. I'm gonna name it underscore mushroom complete. Save. Then I'm gonna just hide it for now. Now I'm gonna put in my reference. So we go to create again that's create go all the way down to where the hell are you free image plane free image plane pick that here it is again and uh always be mindful of your compass and be mindful of where the arrow is facing. It's going this way. Okay. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to my attribute editor here. Click on it. All right. Under image name. Folder. Okay. Again, that's the attribute editor. Make sure you select your image plane. Attribute editor, tab, image name, folder, click it. Now you're going to plug the image reference into here. Yeah, I put mine under my source images. And that's where all your major important stuff goes. Boom. Click, click. Now it's in. So that's how you do that process. Now I want to go to my front view. So I'm going to press the space bar. Front view, space bar. Here is my uh, center of the world. This is uh, um, its floor, you could say. Press W, I'm going to yank it up, 
zoom in. I'm gonna pull to it touches right there. And interesting enough, uh, let me hide my grid, which is this one right here. Hmm, it's a little bit off. Let me turn on my grid. Yeah, if I zoom in, I'm just zooming in. This is the center of the grid. You see this gray line? That's the center. See, you see this line? See this line right here? Here it is, see? That's the center grid. But my object is a little bit off by this much, which annoys me. So I'm gonna zoom in and what I'm gonna do is, you see this handle? Right now it's currently obviously uh, grabbing the image plane, right? The mushroom image plane. And, uh, but it's, but the image plane, the image plane, the, uh, the wireframe for it, okay? This wireframe, the dark blue, its center is here. You see this? That is the mushrooms uh, wireframe, you know, see, it's wireframe, this guy right here. I'm just trying to explain as thoroughly as possible. And you see how it's center, it's a uh, controller, it's a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, my, my uh, image reference model. You see, here, I'm gonna undo it. See, I'm gonna now redo it. So I just grabbed it. I'm just moving it a little bit over to right here. The 3D world center line. So everything's perfectly aligned. All right, that thing done. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. I'm just gonna lower it a bit. There. So, that, if you want to know exactly what that is, well, negative 0.041 for a translate X, translate Y, 5.545, if you want to have exactly what I just did and not mess with the little tinkering. So you select it, you change these uh, numbers. Zero, negative 0 0.041 for a translate X, translate Y, 5.545. That'll get you exactly what I have. All right, good. I'm going to select it. I'm going to put in a layer. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to name it. Underscore. Damn it. Image reference with underscores. Save. I'm going to put up. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Space bar, space bar. Pull back. I'm gonna pull it back in the 3D world. Right, right around there. In the Z. So if you wanna know what number that is, and eh, you could just put negative 12. Negative 12 for a translate Z. For your image plane. That way it doesn't get in the way of my model. Yeah. Now I'm gonna set to reference R. So I can't grab it. Perfect. Spacebar. Um, you know what? Let me save this. Uh, control or Command Shift S. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. Well, you you save in your scenes. Always make sure you save in your scenes. Your Maya file. Save in your scenes. Save in your scenes. Save in your scenes. I'm gonna make a folder for mine. Mushroom modeling. Step by step. Mushroom one example. Work in progress zero one. All right. All right. So also, it's here. You this is where you find where you saved it. 
Maya Projects Default Scenes. Scenes, remember the name of my, the folder I put it in. You don't have to make this folder. You don't have to. The name of it. All right. 10 minutes already, geez. All right. Okay, first thing I want to be mindful of. Um, I'm going to open up my Mushroom Complete. Okay. So you can kind of see what's happening. I'm going to select it. Right now, it's in uh, Smooth Proxy, meaning basically how it looks like if it were to be smoothed out really nicely. End result. Press 1. It shows you my uh, low poly mesh, meaning this is how it looks like when we are working on it. And then when I press the 3, it smooshes it really smoothly, but also kind of condenses it, smooshes it. See? Shrinks it. 1. Three, one, I'm gonna turn to one. Now, let's see how many, um, one of the first things you wanna to need to know is how many sides does it have? So, regarding, talking about the faces, um, in modeling, we need to know about how many faces it has or if we can kinda get a good idea of how many faces. When I mean by faces, I mean by, when I select on it, press right click and hold, go to faces. How many faces? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. This object has eight surrounding faces. So the base, the base model that I begin with should start off with eight faces. That way I don't have to keep on adding more faces later on. And if you also notice, uh, let's see, for example, from the top view, everything is um, segmented, you know, or cut up equally from the top view going across from the top view from uh, front to back. It's a perfect cut. See the line? See the line? The diagonals, um, yeah, they could be useful, but yeah, so you got, you know, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. If we're modeling it, it definitely helps when things are evenly distributed. Stuff like that. Uh, you'll see. So, uh, total eight faces. Let's be aware of that. That's where my first approach is coming. So let's see if you model something and you only had like four faces or six. You know that, but you need more uh, more faces so you get a nice smooth look. Well, if you start adding more faces for the circumference, it's more work. But if you start off with already uh, a certain amount of faces that you need, you definitely save yourself a lot of headache. All right, so I'm gonna hide this guy for now. So eight faces. What am I gonna start with? I'm going to start with a cylinder. You could do it here, poly modeling. Uh, make sure you're on the modeling menu department. And you could either click that or like how I taught you guys, shift, right click. Again, hold shift and right click. The special menu pops up. Choose cylinder. Boom. All right. Again, shift, right click, hold. Oh wait, see, now a different menu pops up because I have uh, something selected. But again, just deselect it. Shift, right click, all right. Just in case if anyone thinks I'm going too fast. Boom, okay. Ooh, undo that. Now, as you notice, poly cylinder one, poly cylinder one, okay. Inputs. This is its inputs. 
it has 20 subdivision axes. Fancy words for how many faces does it have? I'm going to type in 8. Boom. See? See where I'm going with this? This is already a good uh, point to begin with. Whereas let's say if I was dilly dally, then, you know, and I just say, I don't know, 6. Well, 6 is, you know, not that great. I mean, it does make it smooth, you know, uh, but at the same time, it's not, it's, it's cut right down the middle line perfectly, which is good, but uh, forward and back, not perfectly cut. So, eight, perfect. Cut, cut. Trust me, in modeling, those who've been modeling a lot know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you want this. All right, eight faces. Now, next. Mm. Do I need a cap? Yeah, I could leave the cap for now, right? Do I remember I did it? Yeah, yeah I still have the cap on that. Yeah. All right, so, all right, I'm happy with this for now. I'm gonna name it already. I'm gonna name it Mushroom 2. You don't have to name it 2 minus just 2. You could name it My Mushroom or whatever. You just make sure to name it. All right, uh, next. You see how my, um, my handle for it, when I grab it, is right in the middle. But I don't want it to be right in the middle. I want it to be right from the bottom. So how do I do that? Um, well, let me press 4. So I'm in uh, wireframe. Again, that's 4 for wireframe. 4, 4, 4. And I'm going to press D as in David. Just once. Again, press D as in David. Make sure your item is first selected and also make sure you have your uh, uh, move tool selected all right with the W okay move tool W press D as in David see how it changes right uh, if it, those of you who remember this is to allow you to move the pivot point of your object so Tap the D as in David. Don't hold it. Now, you will hold the V key as in Victor. Hold the V key as in Victor. Hold it down. See how it changed? See? Turn into a more of a circle within a circle. This allows me to snap it. I'm going to hover my uh, mouse cursor while holding V as in Victor over here. See that? This... Uh, arrow precisely over it I'm gonna click on it and I'm holding it I'm gonna pull down and when snap to that point down there I'm gonna let go but it's still live meaning I can move the pivot and just be careful just press W it releases the uh, pivot point manipulator okay and I put it down there again one more time I undid everything, select it, press W for the move tool, press 4 to be in a wireframe. Now press D as in David, all right, don't hold it, just press it, D as in David and let go, turns into the manipulator, uh, move pivot manipulator, press, now you press and hold B as in Victor, see how it changed, right? Now you go over to the up arrow. You click on it, and you drag it down, and you snap it. And you let go, but the mini the pivot manipulator is still on. So you could accidentally move it over there. To get out of it, press W. Boom, we're good. All right? Space bar, space bar into here. Now I'm just going to move it. Like that. Okay. Okay. 
All right. How am I gonna approach this? Well, from the front, well, scale-wise, uh, the bottom here seems to be okay. Let me uh, hide my image reference. Let me turn on my uh, the one I made and press one. Okay. Don't worry about this. I'm just aligning it. This is the mushroom complete. So it could be a little bit wider from the base. This I'm selecting the the one that we just made. I want it to be a little bit wider. Press so I'm gonna press R as in Robert. I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm gonna look at my uh, the one I just made. See, it's, at the base, it's a little bit wider, a lot wider actually. So uh, I'm gonna press four. Okay, and then from the center, while I have my uh, second one that we're making just now selected, from the center, in the scale mode, which is R, I'm gonna pull. Boom, so it lines, see? It aligns with the original, the original mushroom I completed. Well, close enough. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll pull my reference image, not, I mean my reference model that I completed month, month and a half ago, I'll pull it up. You don't, you don't have to worry about that. So there it is. to uh, reference all right so all right we got our first uh, part done the width of it from the stock now next and press five and four let me get rid of the uh, grid line all right Let's see how many spans I have on, on uh, this thing, my reference model. Uh, well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so I have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, seven spans, eight spans. It goes up to eight spans. And it goes up all the way up to here. Don't worry what I'm doing, just I'm just helping you see what I'm see what I'm thinking about. So up to the up up until here I have eight spans. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven spans going up. Alright. Um, also, why am I so focused on the spans? Uh, it's important when we go into rigging that things are uh, have enough lines so it can bend like an accordion, you know, because maybe I'll place joints over here, over here, and over here. Joints where it'll pivot and bend. That's what I'm thinking about. You know, like here, here, here. That we have enough. Yeah, we have enough. Good. All right. So seven spans. Let me move this guy out of the way too. Grab him. All right. You know what? I'll add my spans now. Since we didn't mess with the vertices or anything, or we only scaled it down. So since we didn't mess with it in a major way, uh, what I can do is This one, 
delete. Seven. See. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. So again, you select it. You go into the inputs. Type in eight under subdivision axis. So the subdivision axis is 8888. Eight, eight, eight. The reason why we can mess with this is because we didn't push or pull the vertices. You know, we didn't manipulate the components. Only thing we manipulated was just the position and the scale. And with that in mind, it keeps intact its little uh, inputs information. So I added subdivision uh, height at eight. Okay. Now what? Well, I'm gonna try scale it. Press R as in Robert. And as you can see, since my uh, uh, pivot point is down here, well, my scaling point is down here too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, I mentioned how number seven span is underneath the mushroom's dome. See, watch. The way I quickly selected edge mode is when I select it, right click on it, go up, turns into edge. Okay. So one span, two span, three span, four span. 5 span, 6 span, 7 span. The 7 span is still very important because it's high, It's hidden underneath the mushroom roof. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7. Alright, good. hide the grid I'm gonna make a copy of my uh, original mushroom one. I'm gonna move it on the side so you can can see better. See how it's hitting, hidden. So, all right. Um, now I'm gonna start pushing, pulling things. Uh, vertex mode. Okay. Select it. Right click on it. Vertex mode. Grab all of it, pull down, I got my first edge, second edge, third, fourth, oh, pretty close, boom. I'm just looking at that this line over here. Don't mind me, I'm just looking at something.
Alright, his edge is uh, right here. Right here. Right there. So, I'm gonna grab my model and uh, go to a vertex mode. Right click on it, vertex. I'm gonna grab this area and I'm gonna yank it right around here. Yeah. Oh, and uh, if you get confused, you know, it's right here. More or less, a little bit, almost half, you know, well, almost a full height of this, a little bit less. Right there. All right. Next. Right click vertex, grab it, yank it down, grab that, yank it down. I'm in my front, whether front or sides, it's the same. And I'm gonna grab all of it, press R. I'm gonna, hmm, okay. So I'm gonna show something else too, very useful. If I try to scale it, you know, so it's more fatter, see what happens, it starts to pull down. See, see that? Well, if you scale from here, this thing out here, again, uh, you yank on it, it only scales sideways. Very, very useful. And I'm gonna just select that, press four. And from my perspective, I'm gonna grab that here. You can't really grab it from the side or the front. So grab it from here, this guy right there, carefully. Boom. And next one. Grab it from here. Boom. And next one. Grab it from there. Next one. Grab it from there. Next one. I'll scale it from here. See that right there? And the front, you grab it from here. You scale it from here. Zoom in. W and I'm just gonna chuck this up and press R and scale it from here. Boom. See? So for your first modeling I've made it, believe it or not, a lot simpler. Because you're we're basing it off of specific model references and where the divisions are versus a uh, um, uh, drawing reference image. So yeah, it's easier what we're doing. I'm kind of shortcutting a lot of things to make your life less stressful. All right, but at least you got a good idea of pulling, pushing vertices to end up building um, organic shape. Okay, next. All right, all right, now what? Uh, we have to build the dome, uh, the dome slash roof. And let me see, how do I do this? Okay, so I kept on pushing up, all right? So, hmm, how should I approach this? So just pull up, pull it up. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Well, to make this top part, since it already has the same amount of, same amount of faces as the stock, right click, face mode. Click, 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 click. 
carefully click and I don't want to move anything I need I want to keep this location there this edge because it matches over here you know over here we're gonna extrude so I have the faces selected again which was you uh, right click go to faces okay shift right click and hold okay again that's shift hold shift press and hold right click as well extrude face boom now important thing is we're not gonna well you could um uh, let me just double check do i should i trust this i'd say when you get this press this circle right here that way it, it's guaranteed gonna extrude straight up okay again when you press the extrude it's gonna look like this press that and then extrude up right now I'm in my front and I'm just pulling up to here All right, and I'm gonna press W to get out of it. Press W and then right click, object mode. Okay. Again, if I'm here, press W, wait, if I'm here, right click, object mode. All right, so I've got that part. Now we have to make this whole thing All right, so let's take a look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Space bar, space bar. Look at this here as well. Alt five for wireframe unshaded, also known as option five. So this shape more or less the same shape as this a little bit smaller though this guy versus him so this thing maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller just the top right click face okay it knows uh, it's still selected because I that's what I previously had selected in case if yours doesn't look like this, just select the faces carefully. Don't accidentally move them. Because you can accidentally move them. You know what? Let me show it. Let's say I select, select. Or actually, you could actually so accidentally select it as well. But there are times where you can accidentally move it too. Oh, you see? Accidentally selected it. So be careful about that. Anyway, um, press R. I'm just gonna see what I'm doing from the center. The center here. So that. Ooh, ooh, undo. All right, good. All right, so I scale out the roof a little bit tighter. Then I'm gonna go right click, edge, double click. Okay, again, right click, edge, this edge, double click. I'm gonna pull it down a bit. Now let's do some crazy modeling. Select it, right shift, right click and hold. Insert edge loop. 
Boom. I'm just adding one edge loop. Again, same thing. Select, shift, right click and hold. Insert edge loop. If I click on that option box, if I click on that option box, two settings pop up. I'm just gonna press reset. So that's the insert edge loop. Okay, I just touched any one of these edges, made an edge loop. Double select it, double click select, press R. From the center, I'm going to scale. Ooh, that's too much. Well, you could make it like this if you want to, you know? You know, as a matter of fact, just to demonstrate flexibility, I'll, I'll leave it like this. Give it a really wide roof. Press three, okay. Press one. Now, as you can see, the widest point of this guy, his roof, is right here. That's his widest point. Well, well technically right here is, is his widest point, where from here, it curves to the widest point, and it dramatic, well, it kind of smooth it gradually tapers in like a bevel almost but we're not doing a bevel oh well yeah so from here this is not smooth smooth but from the smooth point of view this is the widest point so there's some discrepancy a little you know so with this what's my whole point well, this, its widest point is here. See, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna yank it right around there. And right around there then. But it looks nothing like a mushroom. Oh, there's that. It shrank it in. Okay. So anyway, whole point. Its widest point which we defined, right? And we just pulled it down right around here, give or take. Now I need to add what we call resolution. First, let me get rid of the grid lines. All right. Uh, so you see his edge loop here, right? Well, That's this. Now, from the top, I need to add one, two, three, four. Four more resolution um, lines, adding more geometry resolution. So select it, let's do one edge at a time. Select it, shift, right click and hold. Insert edge loop tool. Right around there. Don't mind this. I added one edge loop. Press four, uh, press W. I want to scale it. And I'll show you why I'm scaling it. Press R, as in Robert. You can pull. Let me just double check something. All right, good. I'm going to pull. See? Press three. See how it's now maintaining more of its massive shape, whereas before it was more squished, smaller circumference. Well, every time you add a resolution line, it reaffirms the frame to keep the frame in terms of its original size. Of, you know, that width that we had, this width. Every time you add a resolution, it adds to it to stiffen up the overall shape. See? Little by little. So, 
Anyway, I did that. I added one. Now, I'm going to add another one. Shift right click and hold. Insert edge loop tool. Okay. Again. Select it. Shift right click. Hold. Insert edge loop down here. So I'm going to add right around here. Press R from the center. I'm going to pull. Press 3 so I can get a kind of get a feel. See what I'm doing? See how it's, how it's uh, interacting with the overall shape? This part it takes time to understand how the geometry is going to react. Okay. Next, press uh, 1. Get out of it. Just tap outside here. Shift, right click, and hold. Oh, where's my uh, insert edge loop? Oh, down here. Good. Insert edge loop tool. Okay. Click. Right around there. Oh, oh yeah. Press R from the center. Don't grab this. Don't do that from the center. Press 3. Alright. Okay, okay. We get a nice little curvature, slowly but surely. But you see how from here, it goes like that and it, it uh, the curve goes in dramatically. So maybe what I'll do is from the center, tuck it back out a bit. Or spacebar, look at from the side view. See how this ugly line? Maybe uh, looking at this, press 5. Looking and scaling it from here, but looking from here, from the middle, uh, right around there. When I add another one here, it's going to make it look nicer. Alright, click outside. Now, shift, right click, and hold. Insert edge loop tool. Last one. Boom. Don't mind how it looks. You see how it looks crazy right now? That's because I'm inserting the edge loop while my model has my smooth proxy. You know? So don't freak out. You see the, that blue outlines? That's the original base model that's basing off of. So right around here, let go. Press 1. Boom. Now I'm going to press R. I'm going to scale from here, but I'm going to look here. I'm going to press 3. See? See what it did? See? From the center, I'm going to pull. Okay. Press 1. Okay. Press 3. Press W. Maybe I'll kind of pull up a bit. See, look at that. And that's how we do that. Right click, object mode, let go. Cool. Yeah, me showing this helps out a lot. Less uh, guesswork. But at least it still gives a good practice in terms of modeling. Okay, because technically this took me longer because I had to just push and pull, push and pull to get a nice geometric shape and my image reference wasn't the greatest. You know, I kind of hacked it all together in uh, Photoshop. All right, now what? Now I need to add more resolution for my undersurface. So how am I gonna do that? Press one. From here, underneath here, I'm gonna shift, right click and hold. Insert edge loop tool. And I'm gonna insert edge loop right around here. The tighter you make it, watch what happens. See? Now, if I were to press 3, see what it did. Look at that sharp edge it did. That sharp edge, almost like knife blade. 
So the algorithm of how this thing, uh, the 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 proxy, how it behaves, you know, the algorithm. If you look at it, the tighter edges you put closer to each other, the tighter, uh, smoother look it's gonna have. I mean, the tighter look, you know, the closer the edge you put to together, the sharper the smooth proxy is gonna look like. Or if I go back to edge, double click that, okay? Remember, that's the edge loop I just put in there on purpose. And if I, if I press R, yeah, I don't want it. Wait, wait, let me just double check something. Did, did it scale? Yeah, it's fine. Um, now if I pull from the center, pull in, okay? Like right on here, like more distance like how his neighbors are. You see my spacing? These spacing also plays a role in the overall shape, obviously, and also in terms of uh, UV mapping. Now, press three. Now it's uh, less sharp. It's still kind of sharp, but it's definitely less. All right, just trying to show how this thing behaves. Next. Oh, now what I'm going to do. Well, I made that edge loop. I got to do something about it. Double click on it. While in edge mode, remember, hold right click edge. Press one. I'm going to carefully look at where my up arrow is. I'm going to pull it. Press three. See, see what's happening. I'm gonna also look upside down. See, I'm giving it more of a lip. See? Pull in. And look how sharp that is. Pull out. One and three. You're gonna always cycle. One, three. And I don't like this how it dents in a bit. Let me double click that. Press R. And from the center, I'm gonna pull on it. Okay, maybe press W. Maybe pull up a bit. Give it more of a roundness. Also, I'm looking at my uh, spacing between every all the spa spaces here. It seems all right. Now I'm looking underneath. Okay, press one. I'm gonna put more details for this. Again, shift right click and hold insert edge of tool. Right around here. Always considering my spacing. Press one, press three. I mean, press W for the move tool. Press three to the, give my smooth proxy. Now I'm going to experiment, push and pull. I'm only pushing and pulling up and down. I'm not scaling it wider or closer. That'll come in later if I need to. You know what, let me experiment. Press R, pull, pull out from the center. Press W, tuck it up back up. Okay, it looks kind of weird. Press one, okay. And then, then you have to be flexible. Maybe double click on this edge, the one I had before. You know, see how tight it is? And that's what's causing this uh, weird dent. Well, maybe I can press R from the center. Maybe I'll pull out. 
from center pull out. Press three. From the center, maybe pull out a bit. More. Down there. W. Press three. A experiment. Pull on these. All right. Get more of a nice rounder lip just by pulling up and down. Like that. Let me flip it over. Let me look around. So I'm starting to get my lip, my round lip. Or maybe you don't want a round lip. Maybe you want a tighter lip, you know? Okay, that looks weird. And then maybe press R and then you can pull in, you know? Press W. Like that yeah, but I want more of a rounder lip press 1 see where everything is see it see watch out to see if it crashes into each other press W tuck it out give a fat lip press 3 see how it looks like look underneath Double click on this edge. Maybe I maybe I can help reinforce the, the curvature by pressing R, scaling it carefully, looking at the center, pulling from the center, scale out so it gets closer. Press three. Right, this is where you start to burn through time because you're experimenting and understanding how how the smooth mesh kind of behaves. Press R. Double click that maybe. Maybe from the center I'll tuck it in a bit. From here. Now I tuck it in. Look upside up. Flip it around. Press 1. Maybe do something like that. Maybe double click that, maybe do something like that, press R, scale it back in, now I'm going to start adding more resolution lines, shift right click, insert edge loop, something um, right around here. Okay, press W, tuck it up a bit. Okay, so it goes from here and then have a have a under lip, give it some meat to it. Press three. Alright, flip it over. Mess around with it. Click outside. Right, right click, object mode, press 1. I'm going to add another edge loop. Shift right click and hold, insert edge loop tool. Right around here. Press 1. Press 3. Maybe pull, start pulling up. I mean, uh, you know, up. Always be mindful of what you're pulling on, in which way. Click, press R. And you can even pull it cold tighter so you get a more of a tighter lip. Let me see how, ma how many uh, faces I have on this guy underneath. Alright, so 
one, two, three, four. I got one, two, three, four. Then fifth one for the under lip. For for sure, it going down. This one, two, three, four reconnects with this guy, which is my seventh span from the beginning when I was working. So four total, four. So here's here's the one I'm working at. Press one. So, all right. You see these faces? See that? That's equivalent to this guy, his, those faces is, is equivalent to this. This, you see this? It's equivalent to that in terms of uh, its purpose in modeling. So press three, one, one, double click on it, maybe it's too much of a meat on to meat to it. Press R from the center. I'm gonna pull. Press three. Okay. One. W. Let me pull up a bit. So every time you know you get make it closer together, you know it does manipulate the surface. Alright, next, uh, I'm going to add an edge loop here, also, also because of uh, texture mapping, you know, if you have a huge gap between surfaces and when you UV lay it and you smooth it, I mean there's a decent maybe chance of stretching. So in case of that, sh uh, shift right click and hold. Insert edge loop, pop it right around here, midway. Let go. Alright, so that's one, two, three. Double click, press R, tuck it back maybe. Press three. Press one, press, uh, I mean, press the yeah, one and press uh, three, one, press W, and right around here, see what that does. See, see how I made it more broad? Press three, Click this, kind of don't like that. Let me press R, pull it in. And then from the center. Press four. Just want to see how, how deep it goes. Press one, pull it down. You could do things like this too. You know. Press three. Press one. So now this, okay, is equivalent to this. You see the surface right here? This guy, that's this. But this one's fatter. Well, for sure, I need to put another edge loop here. Shift right click. Did I do something? Oh, no, I did it. Shift right click. Insert edge loop. Iron there. Press one. 
press uh, R, pull from the center, press 3, press 1, press 3, uh, object mode, right click, object mode. Press one. Let me see how many faces I got. One, two, three, four. Let's see how much this got. One, two, three, four. Four faces. Hmm. Let me uh, grab these two, pull it back so it doesn't crash back in space. Let me also check something else. So from, from the point where it starts to tuck in, one, two, three, three faces. Four faces. Five, six, seven. Seven faces total. Let me grab this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Same amount of faces. Here's another tool. You go to uh, display, heads up display, poly comp. Display, heads up display, poly comp. Let's see how many polygons I have. This one, 184. This one, 176. This one, 184. 176. So I'm missing uh, a span, one more span I'm missing. Where did I... I want to give it exact faces because, uh, you know, when we get into uh, rigging, I mean, probably doesn't matter, but, you know, Right, right around here, I'm missing something on him. Seven, eight. Eight. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, eight and eight. Probably underneath. All right. I'm probably gonna. Where should I put it? Mm, right here. I'm gonna put it. Select it. Shift right click and hold. Insert edge loop. Boom. Press R, scale it in, press W, pull on it, double click that, press R, pull on it, double click that, pull on it, scale wise. Double click that, press W, and pull it down a bit. Press three. All right, I like the, I like my spacing. Go to edge mode, double click that, press 
R, pull it in, double click that, press R, press W, tuck it down, press R, and pull it in, press 3, There. All right. Here's my front. All right, 184. Whoa. Oh, 184. You press three, it it, it gives it a way more number because a smooth proxy. Press one, 184, 184 exact same amount of faces all right um let me just check something one two three four five six seven eight nine nine all the way up to the stock roof point where it connects so that's nine one two three four five six seven eight nine perfect exactly same amount just the proportions are different which is good example of modeling and maybe maybe I can experiment you know I could grab that I can pull on if I want gives a blunt curve or pull it down to do that you know a little bit by a little bit I could click on that maybe I can put scale scale from the center do that press 3 see how it looks and get out of it press alt 5 or option 5 so you can kind of see what it looks like smooth so it's, it gives an interesting little curve instead of more round. You know, so it all depends. You, know, you, you have to experiment, see what you like. Mm, I can even double click that. Maybe scale wise, tuck it in more outside, press three. You know, and then press uh, undo if you want to see how it looks like before. Okay, and redo. I think to undo is what Command Z or Control Z, Un and to redo is uh, Command or Control Y. So right now I'm just tinkering. And you just do it slowly. You know, you smooth it out, see how it looks, get out of it, you know. Try to understand which which edge is causing this. Probably this one. Press R. You can kind of scale it out to see what it does. Undo and you can redo. The shape is very different now. Yeah, I kind of like this too. Just like that. You could tuck it down a bit. You could do things like that if you want. Or not. Maybe pull on it. Maybe press R. Pull up. You could do something like that. You know, I could grab this, I could pull on it if I want, pull down. You want to be careful doing things like this though. 
press R. From the center, I can kind of experiment and scale. It's also good to see uh, image references of other mushrooms. I, I have a whole live, uh, folder of just uh, Google images of rough, uh, mushrooms of different types. And they really look like something from an alien planet. It's just bizarre looking. Um, maybe that's why peop people have a fascination, fascination with mushrooms. They're just so strange and interesting. So I'm just experimenting, you know. My spacing between here and here is a little extreme. You know, maybe I'll pull it down a bit. Maybe I'll grab that and maybe I'll pull that down a bit. Yeah, I'll grab that and kind of pull up a bit. How it looks like. Okay. And then I could, you know, I'm, the way I'm selecting edge is just flicking it, right click, hold, and edge. See? I can pull that down a bit. You know, you could do things like that. <clears throat> You could even, I don't know, do some, ooh, maybe too much. Yeah, that looks neat too. So, where is the, I had image references of uh, mushrooms. Yeah. Here we go. All right, so like I mentioned, Having image references is really important because you get an idea of uh, what kind of shapes you can go for. There's uh, stuff like this, you know, has a tight edge over here. And there looks like they're the same mushroom kind, but just maybe different stages of the growth process, you know, very uh, peculiar. Then there's crazy looking things like this. Uh, with a tight bevel or really bizarre looking things like this like it looks like it's from an alien planet or even this or this so or even this oh And also consider the proportions. These are blades of grass. Look how short and small they are compared to the mushroom. So I'm looking at ideas uh, to tweak the shape. You know, and there's this. This is a tight, it has a round bevel and it, it tightens up. So I'm looking at mine. Um, I kind of don't like this uh, wide lip. Well, maybe I'll leave it, maybe I won't. But uh, see if I can mess with it a bit. Um, I could grab here and press three and maybe make it in my, my move tool. Maybe tuck it up like that. Look underneath and maybe uh, do that, grab that, tuck it down a bit. 
Grab that. Maybe tuck that down a bit, even. Something like that. Grab that. Could tuck that down. You know? Object mode. See how it looks. And I'm looking for what's causing that fat lip. Probably these two. Press three. I can. I've selected the edge loops. You know, by double click, shift double click, shift and hold double click. Press three. Press R. I can kind of scale from the top. Squeeze it in. See. Press one, so you can see it in the smooth pro. Uh, uh, Low poly mode, and I'm only pushing here up and down. See what I'm doing? Press three, get out of it. So you do things like that. Now that this is looking way more interesting. Edge mode, double click. You can do things like that. You know, double click, pull it, tuck it down a bit, double click, tuck it down a bit, you know, look from the top view, you know. Now it looks totally different. So you could do things like that. So, you know, or if you don't want, you just control Z, undo to the point where I had last left it. Um, uh, then you have to consider uh, UV mapping. So like I said, you know, you want, I'd say maybe I mentioned like three mushrooms. Oftentimes in design, th things come in, pair, uh, in threes. So you could have a, wide one and also one like this and maybe a shorter smaller one but that's that's the, what you have to do and you're gonna rig each one that way you learn through a lot of repetition and for each mushroom you know you're gonna basically create the same rig with slight differences in the uh, Skinning, we call it, where, where the vertices, where they bind to the bones, just subtle. So it's a good uh, exercise to prepare you for character rigging. So, yeah. And I can even take it further, maybe from the front view. Maybe I think, I don't know. I want the stock to be skinnier. So I can grab maybe this much. Oh, I don't want to scale it in. See what it's doing? I don't want I don't want that. So like the tool scaling method I told you to scale sideways, you could do that. See? From here. So maybe I want the stock something like this. And grab that. Tuck it in, grab that, tuck it in, grab that, oh, grab that, tuck it out, so base, and grab that, tuck it in, grab that, tuck it out, I could do things like that. So it turns into something very different. Always be mindful of where you are scaling from, you know, from the center. For example, right now I'm only scaling one ring, you know, but if I scale like a set and I try to scale it from the center, see what's doing is exploding outward. But if you, like I mentioned, scale from one of these little widgets down here, 
it scales sideways. Okay. I'm I'm betting someone's gonna forget that and start making major mistakes, so I'm just repeating myself. Right now I'm only selecting one, so I don't have to worry about that scale warping. So there you go, boom. Totally different. Grab this, edge, edge mode, double click. Tuck it in. I have a nice skinny stock. And then you add, you know, bend to it, you know, when after you, you rig it and you kind of pose it, it'll look neat. So you could spend a lot of time just experimenting and tinkering with it. See? things like that but one thing is for sure once you're happy with your model and then you uh, you do your UV mapping you cannot go back and start modeling and tinkering again I repeat once you're done let's say you thought you were happy with your modeling and then you you uh, text uh, you UV map it and then you know, you forget this rule and you go back and you start pushing and pulling the, your model again. And then when you look at your uh, UV map, it's not aligned to your model. Now, if you push and pull just little bits and pieces, like say this one, a little bit like that, or maybe a little bit like that, you know, little increments, the UV map won't be affected that much. But if you do m major revisions like like this you, your uh, UV map will look different it will not update so so that's what it is you're gonna make uh, like I mentioned uh, three of these each one of them slightly different from each other that's why uh, you have to grab image reference and um, um kind of based off of that see i'm basing this off of some of the image references that i just looked at so yeah um and also you know here's one two already and then you have to uv map that uv map that i'll make a follow-up tutorial on uv mapping but that is your assignment make uh three models um yeah and also keep in mind with the spans I want exactly that amount of spans and I'm gonna show you right now again well not counting this from the first span up one two three four five six seven seven is when it overlaps with the the roof that you can't see too well so that's seven eight nine nine is where the base of the stock end of the stock is and where the roof begins so that's number nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty i have a total of twenty spans And my the model has 184 faces, okay, 184 faces, and 20 spans. All right, so you have to aim for that ballpark because once you do that, you have a lot of freedom to manipulate the shape 
the less spaces you have, less spans you have, the less options in terms of how much you can manipulate at the end. So there is that. And just try to follow more or less the spacing of these things. In this area here, see how it kind of changed a bit, but which is fine for rigging. Uh, but for, for, for sure, the stock, make sure your spacing lines up with what I have, at least up to here. Like this much should align, you know, or up to here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first eight faces, because that will match with the rigging of the bones. See? See how it matches with the original? See? Just be mindful of that. Let me get into rigging. So uh, that's about it for this tutorial. Hour and 30 minutes, so make one, two, and three. Do not make the exact same one. They have to look different enough. And maybe one of them could, uh, maybe the, the other one, maybe this one and another one could have some similarities, but I wanna see effort that they look slightly different. And one that could be, you know, the mature version of it, like this, and have a collection of, uh, you know, mushrooms, so so you can get some inspiration. All right, that's it. Bye bye.